Comics, Jack Kirby. When I'm not haunting Stan Lee, I'm listening to my favorite comic book podcast, Double Page Spread. Each week, Wendy Freeman talks to creators like Cullen Bunn, Mark Wade, Evan Dorkin, and more. She is one cool dame who knows a lot about comics. So when I'm at my drawn board in heaven cranking out fourth world pages, I'm listening to Double Page Spread. Available on iTunes, Libsyn, and the Stitcher Network. He arrived just the time. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Southern Fried Geekery Podcast, and we are live again, except this time we've got something a little bit different for you. Uh, I don't have my three other counterparts. Instead, I'm in Chicago hanging out with two of my amazing friends. So who am I here with today? Hey friends, it's Wendy Freeman from Double Page Spread. Sorry. <laughs> and it's Brian Newberry from No Other Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> are we are we breaking your podcast cherry here today? Pretty much. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Right. I was going to say, now somebody's going to look up No Other Podcast and not be able to find one. <laughs> what an <laughs> it's honor. Terrible. It's such an honor to be with you. You, you should start one and call it the No Other Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so we are recording live from my, my humble villa here in Chicago that we are renting for the weekend for C2E2. And it's been freaking amazing. I don't know. I, like I, I've had a blast. I've drank way too much. My my liver ran down Michigan Avenue screaming this morning. Um, we caught it though. We're, we're putting him back to work. So how's it been for you guys? Just kind of off the cuff. It's been fantastic because once again, it's always the greatest gathering of people. It's the greatest group of, of friends and 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 just genuine nice comic people all the time and right. I'm so happy I'm hanging out with you here met you both in person for the first time so yeah. it's been great so I should throw out there we've all been friends for a while I mean everybody who listens to my show and I think Wendy's show knows that me and Wendy have been hooked up as uh, friends not hooking up but uh, <laughs> We Thank you for saying that. I got so I got so drunk I crossed the lines in the straight bit. Um, no, we we've been friends for a long time, but all three of us met on the EOC podcast message boards. Mm-hmm, uh, absolutely. And I think really I met Brian just in this past year uh, is when we've started yeah, like, we really started talking, talking and re- realizing who you know getting to be friends and everything. So that's what I love about this though, because we all get together and it's a it's a group, and now we do it on the Southern Fried Geekery page as much as anywhere. Um, and we just kind of interact and talk, and we make friends who live all over the place. I'm based in Little Rock, Wendy. You're here in Chicago. You're you're in Nashville. I'm in Nashville now, but I used to be in Benville. Yeah, you're Northern you're an Arkansas Rock. kid. Yeah, uh, all grown up and and doing well for yourself. Yep. <laughs> so the con so far, I think what we we talked about this beforehand because we did a minimal amount of show prep, and I say that is the show prep was Wendy making Moscow mules, uh, and it's <laughs> delicious and good. So I think we're going to talk a little bit about what we've seen at the show. And a little bit about some of the things that we've bought and done and just, uh, you know, just rap about it for a little bit. And this we're recording this on Saturday. The episode will go out on Sunday. So I'll be back at the show and we'll have a little bit more to talk about. But uh, I can't wait. So how has the con been for you guys? It's been really overwhelming this year. It it's, just feels like it was so crowded today. Yeah, today was almost on par with New York Comic Con. Yesterday was great. You could walk around. I mean, there were a lot of people, but the aisles are wide. You can walk around. You can get in the booths. Today, there were, especially an artist alley on a couple of aisles. Yeah. I was just standing there for like five minutes, not able to move a couple of times. I, I, I didn't even make it into artist alley today. It's probably uh, for the best. <laughs> I, I showed up, tried to... I had full intentions of jumping in George Perez's sign line. The George Perez line is bonkers. Uh, yeah, I couldn't get in. So they, they actually had capped the line before I got there. They were like, hey, it starts back up at 1, and you can come back then. You know, come back around 12, 30 and get in line. So I come back over there, and they only made it halfway through the 11 o'clock line. And those people were still standing there. And I'm like, yeah, there's no way. Here's the question. Are you familiar with George Perez's uh, work directing lady wrestling videos? I am not. Is that a <laughs> thing? <laughs> George Perez apparently has something about well it's not a CD underground because he's totally cool with the fact that he's done this but apparently he has done like some like scantily clad he directed some scantily clad lady wrestling videos in so his was back. this back during Glow or in no this is like the 90s <laughs> it's like the 90s or something oh so, so you're funny. telling me there's an Attitude Era George Perez directed <laughs> 
uh, possibly with Sable or China or somebody like that. No, 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 much, <laughs> much lower, much not like real wrestlers, just like chicks and you know, oh, okay, ladies, gotcha. like you know, rolling around. Yeah, I need that. I need to go find. I mean, just because it's George Perez, YouTube's a wonderful thing, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, uh, but no. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up super early in the morning and get to the con, just kind of before everybody else does and jump in that line because he's retiring. This is his last con. Yes. And at least for me, I don't know about for you guys, but George Perez, and I've said it on the show before, George Perez is that dude for me. He's he's like, he is the artist that I realized that, hey, somebody draws comics. Like these aren't, like these aren't just storybooks. It's not just stuff that magically appears. These are individuals. But like he's the yep. first artist whose name I committed to memory. Uh, his stuff made me just super fall in love with it. Yeah, I love him too. Not to that extent. My my version is Claremont. Which, Claremont. Yeah, which I got to meet back at we were talking about old Wizard Worlds uh, earlier. But I got to meet him years ago. It's just great. But yeah, I love Perez. I actually love uh, Phil Jimenez. Who's just oh like yeah, this with Perez. Um, if there's anybody who who is a predecessor, or not a, to to Phil, it's yeah. it's it's. Perez, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We uh, know what we mean. Yeah, words. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take another We're drink. having Moscow here. Let's I'm going to have go another drink. Um, but, you know, he followed him on Wonder Woman, and yep. it's just some of it's. If you can't have Perez on Wonder Woman, you might as well have, yeah. have Jimenez. And once again, George Perez as a person is one of the, the kindest, most awesome. And, like, I feel like he is so in love with his wife. Like, I love yeah. him so much as a being and an entity and a talent. When I was really thinking the lines probably taking that long because he's spending time talking to Well, that, that's part of it. So it's not just totally. like, like, to jump ahead, we had a photo op earlier today and you're in and you're out yeah. in five mm-hmm. seconds. And I'm picturing George just talking to everybody that's coming up to his table well, and what's happening. He, he's right there with, with Walt. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, not Walt. Um, Marv Wolfman. Mm-hmm. Uh, his, his booth is right there next to Marv Wolfman yeah. and both of those are just taking time just to chit chat with folks and I can't blame them for that so like I said I'm just going to get up super early and go stand in line and see if I can get it and you know there, there are people there who are doing that thing that I kind of dislike where they're bringing like entire short boxes full yeah. of stuff oh, to sign yeah. like there's folks in there that have like carts and they're sitting in chairs which yeah. t- to each their own that's not mine so you know I, I don't want to hate on like if you're one of those people I get it it just makes me kind of grumpy I wish they would put a cap on that Oh, totally. I wish they would oh, be like, totally. you know, you get five books, uh, you know, five books go to the back of the line. Five books go to the back of the line. Mm-hmm. And you know some of them are real on that cart right over the CGC. Oh, table. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, also the other thing is like, I mean, obviously we all know compulsive behavior. We're collectors. Right. But the fact that like I know so many people are like, I need every issue signed by the inker and the colorist and the blah, blah, blah. Like, like so many, there are so many people who are like, like, and for me it's like, oh yeah, I've got this one thing signed and that's cool and, yeah. and that's nice. Like to me it's cool. Like, oh, I have one, one piece of signed by the writer and the artist and that's all I really need because I mean how, it, what do you really need in life well you're not you're not thinking about resale value right either. exactly that's, I'm yeah. just thinking about personal nostalgia I get yeah. so so many of my comics actually get personalized like you know they make right. it out to Caleb and you know, I like if, that. if you yeah. do that it kills any resale value except you know I don't know if there's a market for Caleb comics oh my god <laughs> so I have had Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba sign at least like three or four things over the years and they find a new way to spell Wendy every single that's time that's amazing <laughs> I can think of two. How many have they come up with? <laughs> they come up with like, like I'll say Wendy with an eye. Okay, Wendy, and then Wendy with two eyes, and then Wendy with an eye. And like, what is this? <laughs> I get that you're sexy Brazilians, but come on, they are sexy Brazilians. Very sexy Brazilians. So let, let's keep going with Artist Alley. So who else has been in Artist Alley that you guys got to talk to and hang hang out with, chit chat a little bit, maybe get some work done by? Well, I got an Iron Fist sketch by uh, Aaron Conley. It was oh, very exciting, uh-huh. and I, I love its pieces, you know. And so every every convention I, I set aside, I get one really nice commission, mm-hmm. and then I'll see if I can get like a couple of commissions maybe from people who I'm not I'm previously unfamiliar with. You know, I think I feel like that's a good a good sort of no, it's a great sort of, yeah yeah a good policy. I try I try to give money. I try to give money to people I don't know. And, Especially the younger, younger guy. So I had one of those moments with Tom Riley, mm-hmm. who is the guy who just did Astro Hustle with um, Jai Mint. Jai Mint. Yeah, we yeah. were talking about him earlier, but uh, I don't, I don't know Jai, but I got a chance to sit and chit chat with with Tom Riley for a little bit. I actually, bought a Conan sketch from him. He had like, sketches six by nine for like twenty bucks. Oh, nice. So yeah, I picked one of those up. Such a cool dude. Just very down to earth, very chill. You can tell that. that so I, this is one of the situations. I'm not sure what his prior work was. 
Uh, I don't know if this is his first big book or maybe he's written two or three that I just m- missed, but he kind of seemed like this, you know, he was a little bit overwhelmed with the attention he was getting. And that's humbling. That's like, oh yeah, you're a real dude. Like you're just a, you're just, you're just a real motherfucker who's up here and hanging out and getting blown away by people who love your stuff. Well, imagine you're an artist, like you're there alone. Like everything is in a vacuum the entire time. Yeah. So the, I imagine it must bring them great joy to be able to get out there and have people like actually hear people face to face telling you what you're doing is really impressive. I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that'll never happen to me because I'm not an artist or anything. You know, I get people who, who have listened to the show and we love that, by the way. So if you ever see us around, it, you know, your friend of the Double Page Spread podcast or the, the Southern Fried Geekery podcast uh, and, and you see us, just say hi to us because we love that. Like it's the same, same way, but I'm not an artist, so I'll never... I'll never have that where somebody's just like, Hey dude, I really love this, like this product that you made. And that's, it's gotta be incredibly humbling when that happens. So anybody else? Have you complimented anybody this weekend? I really, I'm very introverted, especially in things like this. Mm -hmm. Um, this is actually the most time I've ever spent in artist alley. Yeah. It's not my thing. Um, I didn't really look at, you know, I walked by the big creators' tables and stuff and looked at what they had. But most of the time, I'm looking for, like, something really unique and off the wall. Um, I picked up, uh, and I cannot even remember who did it. They had this um, print of Howl's Moving Castle for me. Oh, yeah. I love the story. Like, it's based off a children's book that mm-hmm. I loved when I was growing up. And I love the the movie of it and the guy just did this awesome drawing of the castle but it was on old parchment paper and it was nice. very very stylized and just gorgeous um so yeah that's just one of the that's probably i think that's the only thing i picked up in artist alley the whole time i was there nice that's cool well before so i got i grabbed a few pieces in artist alley and had a great time catching up with folks but before we get there uh sean who is our resident artist on the show sent me with something for wendy so hey, i did sean. I didn't want to give this to you yet, but uh, for those of you who... Oh, Commandy, quick... Oh, the drawing of me. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Sean. My space is so, That makes me the happiest person on the planet. Thank for you. those of you who listen to the show, you guys remember <laughs> last year, Sean did drawing... Uh, he did one drawing every day for an entire year, and he did a lot of listener requests. And, oh, that's a... Is that the... the yeah. That's the print? Oh, dude, that's so cool. That Sorry, right. I didn't mean to just oh. jump in. in the middle. No, dude, that's that's why. That's <laughs> that's why we're recording this live. But no, Sean did those drawings a day, and Wendy requested a few of them. I think those are some of the ones you requested. Yes, some of those I requested. I wanted Commandy and Click Clack. Yeah, because you know he's he's awesome, and, and he drew a picture of me drumming at All In the big <laughs> wrestling events. He drew a picture of my stuffed animals, my cruises. Yep. <laughs> well, I will definitely. Hopefully, he'll listen to this episode. I don't know if he will or not. Um, and he drew a picture of this wrestler that I'm always hitting on who dresses like a space monkey. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, 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 literally, this is crazy. So this dude comes to Chicago like once a month at this one wrestling event and his whole gimmick is that like he is a space monkey. Did we watch a movie with him in it last night? <laughs> 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 oh, vampire. Thank you. Oh. And I always bring him gifts. I bring him gifts every single month and I message with him and he's very nice. So we were at the EOC get together last night, guys. And I, so... There was a film playing called Robo Vampire that I have no idea what this movie is about. At we all. don't want to. I don't want to know. Also, I didn't understand what's robotic about this vampire. Did you not see? You might have <laughs> left by the time. So there was an off-brand Robocop. Oh, it, shit. It, yeah. I called him aluminum foil Robocop because the costume was that good. And, and he's chasing these like very... Um, Racist. Racist is a good word. Uh <laughs> Chinese robot vampires that are just they just hop they and just one hop. of them had a monkey face and, and yeah we, we just, again don't don't know what this this film is about we did look up the poster for the movie and Ooh. they actually cropped in the a real Robocop <laughs> so imagine you see the poster for this and you think that's the movie you're watching it's like some Robocop <laughs> sequel and the budget for this was about a dollar twenty five <laughs> And the guy literally looked like he was wrapped in aluminum foil. Uh, and he had a flamethrower and a machine gun and everything. And he when they blew him up and they were putting him back together, there was a car battery in him. Oh. I don't know if you saw that part. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that big jumper cables, too. Yeah, your, your homework from this point forward is to go find uh, Robo Vampire Robo Vampire and watch it. And never tell us what it means because we'd had no sound. Look, we don't 
want the actual like like plot of it. We just want the the idea because yeah. <laughs> we have not seen it with the, with the. Are there any movies like that for you? Where like uh, like I was having a conversation about the film Repo Man and how like I have never seen the unedited version of Repo Man. So Repo Man is always like flip you man uh. flip this, and I feel so if I saw it with the actual cursing, I feel like it would somehow. Uh, ruined it for me. Do you have anything like that? Where no, I can't say that I do. Um, but that, like, I, so I don't watch movies. I, like, I, I mean, I watch the Marvel stuff when it comes out, but I don't watch a lot of film or television. Uh, just in general, I don't. So I'm trying to think of what would have been the edited version of a thing that I saw that I don't know. Well, uh, something where you didn't get the full version of it. Something where you only saw part of it, and like that's just what you what you know of it. <laughs> Listen, the- listeners, if there's anything like that, please come to the Southern Pride Geekery page and share that with us. Yeah, because I, I want to know. I don't know if I have an... I'll, I'll probably think of one later tonight. Off the top of my head... Uh, He'll wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning yeah, I'll and remember say, The last Starfighter! Or some <laughs> <right>. <laughs> I don't know. So I, let's, let's look at some of these pages that you bought. Yeah, so I did. I went down and picked up uh, a few pages um, down in Artist Alley. And... One of the, the, the big one for me, and it's the one I'll start with, is I, I went into this con wanting a page from Murder Falcon. Oh, um, I love Murder Falcon yeah, by, so much. By Daniel Warren Johnson. And, and I succeeded in that. Uh, cause it turns out when, you know, you, you trade them money, they will give you art. Uh, so. <laughs> Once again, DWJ, salt of the earth, genuine, he, kind, easy to talk to. I love him as a person and an artist and everything. One of the easiest people to talk to. One of the most just genuinely, like you said, uh, down to earth. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't realize he's a rock star. No, no. At he all. And he, and he absolutely is. Uh, but I picked up page, uh, it's Murder Falcon number five, page eight. And this is the page, if you're reading the book, it's the page where your main character is having a conversation with his wife and basically what the book is telling you is that the, the main character had cancer and it's emotive. So the actual murder Falcon is not in this book at all, but it's one of the most emotive pages from the book. Like when I read this book originally, it just punched me in the chest. I started bawling uh, because it just pulls that out of you. So I could have bought another page that had some more of the action oriented stuff in the book, you know, actual murder Falcon or, you know, the van, the, the power wagon. From you the van. want the van. You I do. I, I do kind of want to, if I had, I had an extra 300 bucks, I would have got that too. <laughs> um, so I grabbed that from him. Uh, I absolutely love it. Can't wait to get it framed. Um, I got another couple of pages from Tim Seeley. Uh, and this is, these are pages from X sanguine. Oh, Nick Sanguine, the book uh-huh. that he did with Josh Emmons. Yep. Josh Emmons is one of my bestest friends in life. Really? I, he and I text all the time. I love him. We, I took him on a garden walk last year. I demanded he go and like take a tour of my neighborhood looking at people's flowers. <laughs> I love Josh Emmons. Nice. <laughs> well, yeah, so I, I enjoyed X Sanguine. Um, is, do you say X Sanguine or X Sanguine? X Sanguine. Okay. Yeah. Because um, think about the word is X Sanguinate. That's true. That makes sense. As, as we could ask someone who is a nurse. Let, let's leave him out of this. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his own comics. Right I get now. to be wrong <laughs> enough as it is. We don't need to bring my husband on the podcast, letting folks know that I'm wrong. Uh, but no, I picked up uh, a page out of it's a it's a spread out of uh, issue five. It's page eighteen. Um, Folks getting stabbed in the throat, which is always fun. First of all, I love Dick Sanguin because it has the trope that I love of like people in the diner when the we, waitress is wearing like the old timey aprons and yeah. stuff. Like I love that. I, I love to, yeah the whole the whole like sort of twist of Dick Sanguin. People should go back and they should find that book. It's a, it's a fun. So who put that book out? I'm trying to remember. Um, was it Image? Was it Dark Horse? Was it Wildstorm? I don't remember talking in my head. There's too many publishers, and I've had too many drinks. It's wild story. Um, How old is it? It's, yeah, it's, no. it's it's out there. I mean, this is like so this is number five. Maybe five years old. I'd oh, say it's probably not wild yeah. No, I want to say you know you know we do have these. We do have, we do have like, yeah. I feel like we're taking the fun out of this. We keep going. But no. So the, and then the other page is uh, a bunch of feral dogs eating a corpse because because why not? Uh, that's what that's what comics should be. Um, and so I got those. And I'm happy to add those to my collection. I absolutely love them, and got them at a really, really decent price. Um, the uh, so I got a commission done by Tyrell Cannon, who is an amazing kind of new artist. He's kind of a new find. Oh, it was uh, Dark Horse. It Sorry, was Dark Horse. It was Dark Horse. Okay. Yes, go on. Uh-huh. Um, so Tyrell Cannon. Not yeah. to confuse with Xander Cannon. 
No, no, Tyrell is a is a, he's a new guy. Um, I this was like I was getting ready to to come to C two E two looking for young. I like getting commissions done by newer artists, people who haven't hit the map big, who have you know, like they're they're hungry, so they put together amazing work. And Tyrell Cannon for me is that dude. And I was talking to uh, Jason Wood and David Price and both of them from the EOC uh, podcast, and they were both saying the same thing. So they both got work done by him. The piece that I got from any other artist would have been a five hundred dollar piece. It's I, a nice piece. I, yeah, I, I oh did my not. Gosh. I did not pay that much money for it. Did you I get paid, both pages with so it. So what he did <laughs> is, and this is something that I've never had done. All the commissions that I bought before in my life, he actually gave me the rough. Yeah, I was like, yeah, so, I've never, never seen, seen that. that. <laughs> so I love, I love process pages, and of he did course. for Zap as well. So he he That's gave awesome. when I went to pick it up yesterday, and I want to say I paid I paid a, a bill fifty for this. Oh, so not too bad at all. First of all, this is this is gorgeous. Yeah, this I'm gonna piece throw. Is super nice. I'll throw a piece. I'll throw a picture of it. Or I may have already thrown a picture of it up on our uh, Facebook page and Instagram and stuff like that. But uh, it's an eleven by seventeen, and it's it's not full color, but it's it, it you don't miss the color. Uh, but he gave me the process page. He gave me the rough sketch of it. I've never had an artist do that. And so what I'll end up doing eventually is probably framing these side by side as kind of a this you know before and after kind of thing. But the the work that he put into this is ridiculous. It, it, like I so I got him to do Ultron. Ultron's my favorite Avengers villain. And so what he gave me is not only the full sketch of Ultron, but Ultron is standing in front of just a busted up building like a skyscraper. Uh, and there, there's rubble all around. The only other piece like that I've gotten like this, where I feel like they went above and beyond what I paid for, was Kelly Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Kelly Williams, it's that whole thing. And if you listen to the last episode, uh, Dalton Shannon from Four Color Media was on it. And he he was talking and he made a statement like a panel can tell a story, absolutely. one panel. Mm-hmm. And so the piece I had done by Kelly is that, and this piece absolutely is that. It's one page. And there's a story there. It's a motive. Like there is a there is definitely a plot on this page. When he filled the whole page, like I've I had some pieces done that are that size and like just part of the middle's covered. Like you got your money's worth. Oh, absolutely. And, and really, I would figure the sketch would be more of a thumbnail, but no, it's the same size. It's as yeah, the other yeah. It's right. an eleven yeah. by seven. <laughs> and so, and here's what you know, me saying I'm not an artist. Here's what's hilarious is I'm looking at a sketch and I'm like, that's leaps and bounds beyond what I could do. Well, I figured you were going to say I would have paid 150 for this. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. Which I think you would for that size. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, yeah. So I'll throw a picture of this up there. It's just. Uh, it's like I couldn't believe it when I That's saw it. That's majestic. So let's talk about these Conans. Let's talk about the Conans. Yeah. So uh, the the other piece I got is by Tom Riley, and it's 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 not big. I think it's a five by seven, and but it's Conan, and it's it's done in ink and it's red ink. So Conan's covered in blood. I paid twenty bucks for it. Not bad at all. Like I said, That's it's, perfect. Yeah, it's a smaller yeah. size, but Tom Riley is the cat that's doing all the art on Astro Hustle right now, which is a new book. Uh, it came out. We were just talking like about it two on weeks here. ago. Yeah, right, I don't right. like issue two hasn't dropped yet. I don't think. No, nah, the first okay. one was literally like two three weeks. Yeah, yeah, um, I haven't read it yet. I yeah. will. It, it's so good. It's got a cool cover. It looks like the classic kind of trading card. It, it, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's kind of got that feel. Uh, I'll, I'll probably end up talking about it on one of the episodes. So when we talk about comics, I don't want to get too far out there. But it's just it, he's an amazing young artist that again does all kinds of stuff that. He's going places, and that's the only way I can put it. He, he's got an amazing style. Uh, it, it's very, it's very cartoonish. Uh, if I had time to sit down and think of a better way to say it, I probably would. But somewhere along the lines of, uh, it's it's not quite cartoony in the way that like Bruce Timm is cartoony. It's, yeah. it's stylized. It, it is stylized, but it's so so it's somewhere around like Bruce Timm meets a horror comic. And like like that like it's more serious than Bruce Timm's work is. Not that I don't take Bruce Timm seriously, right? But of course, yeah. yeah. But so it's just it's bump, it's bananas. Like it's so good. Well, I'm across the room, and the the blood's kind of got a neon pink tinge to it mm-hmm. from my angle too. So like it, it kind of glows a little bit. First of all, I'm kind of I'm kind of super into dudes in their bare chest covered in blood. So I'm really I, into I, this. I, I think everyone is. <laughs> <laughs> You might want to hide your portfolio because something might be missing when we're done. <laughs> and both of those new Conan series are, are really enjoyable. Like, I've enjoyed the Ron Garney one. Uh-huh. I think that's really cool. And it, yeah, the other one, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I know, but Barbarian. I'm very happy about the new, the new Conan. Like, I mean, I loved 
Conan when Beck Clunan mm-hmm. was using that a couple of years ago. Like I was like, yay, we brought Conan back. This is cool. But now we brought him back to Marvel, and I'm I'm happy with that too. Yeah. So me and Craig actually had this conversation the other day because we're both reading both the titles, Barbarian and yeah. Savage Sword. I th- I love my mood. So I think my mood is crushing it on it. And so to me, Barbarian, they're both A titles. To me, Barbarian is just a smidge better. Um, but he loves the Garni. Uh, and he, so we, we have this discussion, which, uh, you're reading them both. Could you say which one you prefer better? Or are they both just like equivalent to you? Well, it's interesting because I feel like it's the Garni who's like the, uh, like the sketchier, inkier Garni, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I, I he's like, a lot looser, right? Exactly. So I, I enjoy seeing the progression of this Garni. I think that's very cool, as opposed to like you know his classic sort of Captain America work, or whatever. You know, I feel like there's, I, I like seeing the evolution of Ron Garni. Yeah, and, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm enjoying them both. But yeah, the Mahmood, of course, mm-hmm. is, is hot. It's, that's he's, the hotness. He is the hotness. Yeah. Yeah, but did either of you read No Road Home this week? I did. I did not. It's. Classic Conan story with the Scarlet Witch uh-huh. as the female lead in a uh-huh. Conan story, and so it ties right so into the event. She's doing something uh, scantily clad. No, they, <laughs> they do almost go there, but they both stop. They, they back it up a little bit. So, spoilers, but. Um, <laughs> All that book needs in it for me is Namor, and if they put Namor in that book, you would have you would have my bet my favorite characters in Marvel. My only fear about them bringing and folding him into the Avengers is you better buy those reprints now because when they lose the license, you're yep. never going to be able to get them. Nope, they they, you, they won't be able to be collected. Yep. So just like anything with Raw in it. Yeah. Raw. They have to. They somebody's. They like. I, well, they do a lot of. Blah, 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 I'm stuttering. <laughs> Uh, they do a ton of work with IDW, and is it IDW that has that license for ROM? Yeah, yeah, because uh, it's Hasbro. IDW yeah. has all the Hasbro. Now, what about the Micronauts? Who's got rights? Like I, 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 I want to say IDW has those. Right, yeah. Okay, they have the um, because you can get some of the Micronauts in the main Marvel, but, group, like but see, not the whole team. Right? I would like to see that year that miniseries of X Men and Micronauts. I'd like I to see. love the first time Xavier really goes. Crazy bad. Like, that was the lead in for Onslaught like 20 years before it happened. Right. Like, I want to. Is there a collection of that? No. I want to have, like, I'm thinking of going into having some stuff bound. And, like, yes! I yes! want, but I don't want the comics. I want to reprint because, you know, they're better quality. Right. Paper and right stuff. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And I would love to have that reprinted. Um, oh, that series was so good. Have you ever had anything bound before? Is no, no. I've. I have, I think. Both of you have probably seen the pictures of my hardcover collection, mm-hmm. and there's stuff that will never be put in that format. And I, I want to, yeah, just some. do it, do it yourself. Have somebody yeah. do it. Who was you. it in the EOC who was binding their own stuff? I looked magnificent. Was it was it Bean? Was it who, who no? Was there's it? several people that have done yeah. it, but it's right. gotten I, to I'm a so point jealous. where I'm you so can jealous. pretty well mirror a Marvel Omnibus yeah. at this point, mm-hmm. and that's the stuff I wanted. To and do. relatively, the, the the comics inside them are remaining the same they're unscathed I, I don't know that you can ever unbind them but you know as long as it's just a reader copy and you want to keep it yeah, I, yeah do and it. that's why I prefer to have like a a trade reprinted mm-hmm. and have it bound instead of an original copy because you know paper quality and all that stuff plus the gutters because the more issues you bind you've got that right. read when you open it up and you'll be missing part of the art so yeah gu- so the, here's a question gutter loss is a it sure. gutter loss. I, yeah. hate, I hate the loss of my gutter. I'm always <laughs> in the gutter. So, like, I have certain books. Every so every summer, I'm like, it is the beginning of, of cookout season. Mm-hmm. And my favorite thing is, like, to sit out there and read comics out on the back porch and, and, and barbecue. And so there are certain books that I will leave at my boyfriend's house. Like, for example, like, The Werewolf by Night Omnibus mm-hmm. or some shit. I'm like, this is my backyard reading. Right. Because it's just too cumbersome. It's too cumbersome to bring you away. You know, it's just too, so big. And so, like, I always pick, like, I'm like, this book is just a large, cumbersome, terrible to carry. I can't read it in the in the coffee shop. I can't right. Read, you know. So See, like, that's what I do, though, is I take them to the coffee shop, <laughs> and I read them there. And, like, every Sunday, just about, I'll have a post on one of the boards of, 
my cup of coffee and what Com- giant coffee. omnibus <laughs> I got bugged with me this so week. So I have not finished that Werewolf by Night book because it was my summertime 2018 <laughs> book and I just never got to finish it. I need to get get through you that book. You need to have book. more barbecues is what you're telling us. Yes, I would like, yeah, we all need to cook out some more meats. Y'all need to come over and we'll, we'll have like, a, like we'll each have our omniboo and just, you know. Cook it sounds, that sounds like the best vacation in the world. So I have something <laughs> similar to that. Mine is, and I've been working on it through about two years and, you know, it's, it's the Amazing Spider-Man Volume One Omnibus. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's it's the the Ditko and and Lee stuff, uh, and I, I'm about finished with it, but it's taken me a little bit. I just read it piece by piece because those books are dense. Like oh, yeah. those books are wordy as fuck. They take a hard, they're hard to get through, uh, and they're amazing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it says so right on the cover. Uh, <laughs> but they it, they're, they're and but they're worth reading. So it's one of those things. Like if you're a comics fan, like. I feel like at some point you have to at least read the first issue of Fantastic Four or the first issue of Spider Man. Uh, you know, if you can find it, the first, the first issue of Batman. Like those things, you just you, you know, to to pay homage to the people who came before or something. It's just something you've got to do at some time in your life. And the opposite of that is the bathroom reading. Right. The opposite of that is I buy at every single show I go to. I make sure that I buy an essential, like a five dollar crappy trade paper bag of mm-hmm. some sort of reprints. You know, whatever the DC, was the DC equivalent, you know, the DC showcases. Oh, what are the, yeah, the show, showcases. Is it showcases. I will buy. I will buy like a showcase of like some classic romance comic or some bullshit, and that is my bathroom reading. You know, right. <laughs> I just leave it in there, and oh. it's just like my light garbage reading, and I can take it wherever, and I don't care how. Well, what's so funny is both publishers have abandoned. In those formats, but Why? to tie it back to the con, there were several booths that were selling essentials mm-hmm. and showcases. Five bucks, or yes, less. Yeah. yeah, that is why they're perfect. Well, and I Think did laugh that a couple were selling them for twenty, and I'm like, are you insane? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go back and go buy like a man thing. I'm going to buy those. I bought well, Iron Fist and Power. You don't have to go there to buy a man thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chock full of man. So. All right, so Brian, you said that Artist Alley isn't necessarily your cup of tea. What is your cup of tea? Because like you didn't, you didn't want your wallet did not walk out of this thing unscathed. No, um, so I buy a crap ton of statues, and I stopped a couple years ago. Are you a Bowen man? Oh, I have a crap ton of Bowen and sideshow. I actually got into the custom kits mm-hmm. where people would make their own sculpts and then I'd send it to a painter. You know, they do a couple That's casting That's so ambitious. I admire you. That's so ambitious. Because you, there's characters you're never going to get. Um, like, I have a whole lot. I had a whole lineup of, like, the New Mutants because <gasps> Bowen never did them. Um, I've got a custom... Okay, we're going deep. Mm-hmm. Have you all ever read The Outsiders? Yes. The original Outsiders, not the Nightwing Outsiders. Oh, okay. Uh, well, um, I had a she dragon from Savage Dragon mm-hmm. converted into Looker from the Outsiders. So I like have a whole series of I, ha- I have hundreds of statues. But a couple years ago, I stopped because you know we have a huge house. But there comes a point where you know long boxes take up space. Well. You got to display the statue, so you got to have space. So how do you display? Do you have like glass cases? I do. do. I do have some glass cases. They're not out in our new house since we moved to Nashville. But I sold a bunch of them. But I kept like all my X Men. I have Sailor Moon ones. Mm -hmm. That's one of my weird little off. I do Sailor Moon stuff. I saw a Sailor Um, Freddie Mercury T shirt today that kind of tickled me (laughs) (laughs) pants. But as I'm looking around the floor, I was looking for some cheap graphic novels to potentially bind, which did not strike gold yeah. at this convention. But I wanted the Scotty Young Gentle Giant babies. Um, and those suckers are hard to find. Not that you couldn't find them at the con, but they're hard to see in the booths. Yeah, they're, they're literally tiny babies. The boxes are like five by five, and these booths are crammed with 50 billion Funko Pops. Uh-huh. And oh. you have to like look and look and look and like, oh, one of them's hidden down there. I feel like this is a separate conversation. Are Funko Pops the Bane or a good thing? Bane. Like- <laughs> I'm in the full Bane camp on this. <laughs> They're uh, making some, some boost some money, but I own I think I own six of them. I own total. none. Yeah, and most of mine have been gifts. So, but I'm also not a statue. Like I know the rest of the guys from the show, uh, you know, Craig, Sean, and Jerry. They they all love them. Like Craig has an entire wall of the Star Wars Funko Pops. Well, it's just so amazing because you make one for little 
literally every property yeah. Yeah. ever. They have Golden it's Girls amazing. ones, yeah, 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 which is amazing. Yeah. yeah, like I own the Godfather ones. I own the Godfather ones. Okay, Kaylin's taking me down a trail. And when y'all were walking <laughs> through the con floor, did you see random Golden Girls shit throughout the whole thing? Yes. Golden Girls shit. I saw that? a canvas painting uh-huh. of the okay. Golden Girls. I have a question for you. I have a question for you as gay men. Why Golden Girls and not Designing Women? I love both. Yeah, I was going to say. My <laughs> husband hates both with a passion. What? I was going to say, I love them. We're, we're, we're also Southern gay men, and so both of, like, that and Steel Magnolias is a good weekend. Yes! yes. I have been to a wedding at, that so Golden Gr- at the Designing Women house in Little Rock. That's so uh-huh. cool. The inside of the house looks nothing like the, the, the shower. The but yeah, it's there. Uh, it's there. It's there. It's downtown. Because I mean, Delta yeah. Burke is like a queen icon. Well, I mean, she's great. I think yeah. some of us live by the whole uh, the night the lights went out in Georgia. Georgia. Yes, uh, it, it's amazing. So I, and I lived in Georgia for a few years, and we like. I don't know. Some of my friends from Georgia, like they, they know that spiel by heart. But isn't it a shame that Dixie Carter was such a conservative when her character was so liberal? Uh, Wait, she is. I don't uh, know anything about Dixie She Carter. was. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. that's good acting. <laughs> <laughs> Very good acting. But yeah, I mean, but I mean, think about like designing women. Like there are so many great like speeches and monologues. Oh, yeah. Like you know, I, you'll never sell drapes to this town again. Like like designing women is so like like ripe with with. Oh, with like over the top uh, bitchiness and 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 like uh, like why is deciding women not held? I have the been. Oh, it girls? is, but Golden Girls has surpassed the couple last couple of years. <laughs> I've been to gay bars where they're playing on the screen uh-huh. the speech from the Knights of the Light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Knights of the Lights from Georgia. All so. right, so back to the Scotty Young baby statues. Let's, <laughs> anyway, let's on track. So what so, uh, what what did you grab? I found a booth that had. Three of the, I think they're up to when Storm and Cyclops come out, there'll be 19 of these statues. They had three of them for 25 bucks each. I was oh, like, wow. I turned to the guy and go, that price right? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll take them. Right. So I got a Vision, Punisher, and crap. Another one for 25 bucks each. He had the Daredevil one for 60 something. I was like, eh. Not right now. Right. Go around the corner. Another booth has a whole bunch of them for thirty-five each. So I picked up Groot and um, a tiny rocket holding a tiny mm-hmm. rocket in his hand, um, and two others. And I can't remember. I've had a Moscow Mule at this. There point. we go. And then on the way out, um, before I came here, I picked up the Rocket Raccoon exclusive and the Squirrel Girl. Mm-hmm. Funny thing with that though is the guy uses the Square app. Bay. That damn thing is tied to my husband's email address. <laughs> Shit you not. 30 seconds after I'm like, what'd you just buy? And I'm like, damn it! Because <laughs> those were the mo- those were not 25 bucks. <laughs> those were 75. I spent about 150 at his booth. Ah, uh, that's still not bad though. I mean, no, no that's, that's still really good. And the thing about me and my husband, we're both cheap asses. We will shop for a deal. I looked at eBay, I'm like, I ain't getting these this cheap. Right. But it's been years since I bought a statue. And I'm like... You deserve it, dude. You deserve it. You are on vacation, my friend. And I have yes. this thing with the baby versions of stuff. I don't know why. I like, just like that whimsical thing that, yeah. that ties you know, to I it. Have, I have such an issue. You and I have had this conversation. And I feel like this is a whole conversation unto itself. The cutesification of the Punisher. Is that right or not? I bought the baby Punisher. Did I say that one earlier? Yeah, that's why I bring this oh, up. Like, it's adorable. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of cutesification on the Punisher. A lot of little Punisher plushies, little Punisher this. Is that detracting from what? I don't. Uh, he I, just looks so grumpy, and it was cute. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, and I on, on it also some... ties in with um, the fact that like uh, uh, police and and military factions and so forth have like co opted the yeah, Punisher, that, and, oh, which is yeah. problematic. So here, here's here's my thing on that. I care more just for me and me. Then we're getting off a little bit, but I care more about that. Like that bothers me more than the than the quote unquote cutification of it. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like the cutification of Punisher isn't isn't worse to me than the the cutification of the Hulk. Because uh, if you want to get down to it, like, you know, I don't care what they try to say. The Hulk has been the cause of like, at least a million deaths. I mean, that dude levels cities, right? Oh, not uh, according to Jeff Johns' run on Avengers. Well, nobody's no. ever died. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, that's we'll, sorry. We'll, that's me being geeky. Yeah, we'll we'll let him have that. But uh, <laughs> I tend to disagree. But I completely Jeff disagree. Uh, but also Cyclops, like Cyclops is a killer too. And so oh, yeah. yeah, like like he so can't it's, control, yeah. no, it's just a cute. It's so for that I understand it. it that doesn't bother me nearly as much. Um, it's funny because I feel the cutification of the Hulk is understandable because he's essentially kind of like throwing a tantrum. Yeah. So yeah. that's easy to embody. Whereas the Punisher is literally like uh, a dude who's just... Oh, he's a, he's yeah. a sadistic serial killer. Oh, he's yeah. insane. He yeah. has snapped. He's, yeah. not, he's not someone you should look up to. No. Uh, right, right. But there, there are other, you know, there are other killers in in the Marvel Universe that, you know, that I just think it's a style thing. I think he made a cutesy kingpin. I totally buy the hell out of it. Oh, him. it's a big door. <laughs> just, 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 just a little, little Baki who would just pet his little bald head. Um... <laughs> So, so what is it about the statues that, that get, get you? So uh, this is something I'm always weird because I'm a collector just like, like we all are collectors, mm-hmm. but I'm more interested in art and comic books. So I always, I'm always curious about what drives people who collect other things, be it statues or Funko Pops or, it, you know, anything. To me, it's high end art in a way. Yeah. Um, I don't do the action figures because I don't like. The articulation just messes with me. Mm-hmm. And but there is an art to sculpting. There oh, is. It's a sculpture, yeah. essentially. Yes, For sure. I see this. And granted, these are casted, but I've talked to the people that sculpt these things. Mm-hmm. They are pure artists. Oh, for sure. And I like the permanence of it. Mm-hmm. And they're sturdy. And then I don't have any pictures of it right now, but when they're all out, they just look amazing. Um, and really, I got into it like... like late 90s when these were just starting to happen like well before Sideshow Bowen didn't even have a company yet right and I was just like I just fell in love with them um, but they're pricey as hell yeah you know y'all spend several hundreds on commissions I will spend several hundred on a statue at this point though the prices have gone up insane I can afford to still be in the game but my husband will give me side eye the whole time <laughs> see Wendy has the right idea Wendy just collects gays so, and, we just and she to, added a new one. Yeah, we just come to her of her own free will and volition. All right, I had a picture of what I bought. So I got a group of Rocket, the Punisher, Star Lord. Daredevil is making me squee. Thanos is my favorite. He's holding this little balloon with death painted on it. And it's just a grumpy little baby Thanos sitting there with this balloon. And then Magneto and Vision. And then I got the Squirrel Girl and. Um, Rocket by itself, which was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Oh wow! Years back, nice. Um, at one of the booths, Diamond Select, which I usually do not like their stuff, but they are finally stepping up their game, even on the PVC. I was going to say, so I actually this is so I, I actually own one of the PVC statues from Diamond Select, which I used to hate them because years ago they just looked so cheap compared mm-hmm. to everything else that's out there. But now I they look- the booth. I was like. All right, you're almost at Bowen quality with PVC instead yep. of resin for fifty to a hundred bucks. I'm like, damn. I've, I've got the Hulk. That's the figure from Ragnarok, the film, yeah. and it's where he's got like the. It's it's based off of the. It was the Greg Pak run with oh, who was doing the art. Um, Anyway, it's based on that where he's got like the gladiator gear yep. on and the giant hammer, and like I, that's what that's what I've got. And it like if you don't know it's PVC, you think it's resin. Yeah, I was looking at him like they are doing. They've got a lot better quality at this point. Um, but in that little booth, buried, they have the new Storm and Cyclops baby that are coming nice. out. I'm like, yeah, he's gonna kill me. But, <laughs> so, who is your ideal Scotty Young baby statue that it does not exist yet? Who do you want? Or let's say let's say there's a DC baby. Archangel. Like, uh, Archangel nice. hands, hands. So like like we're talking like the, the razor wing. Yes, with a grumpy little pouty face. It would be <laughs> hilarious. Apocalypse Archangel. Yes. So I don't know which one they would they've made. So I'm, I'm figuring. I, I'm guessing there's a Hulk one. Have they done a Hercules? No, they actually have not. See now, okay, that's it. That's my that's my I want a grumpy baby Hercules. <laughs> so what about your little diaper? Uh huh. Here's the whole run. Sorry, I know it's a. Uh, Oh, okay. Picture, I would want but. I would want Ileana from New Mutants. I'd want to imagine. She is my. I was actually going to say that because she is literally my favorite Marvel character. Period. Like I do not. She's have, my favorite Marvel woman. Period. She's I, one of my favorite characters ever in life. I do not have my oh statues. I'll have uh-huh. to show you. I have every Ileana statue and customs I had made. I have a Dark Child from um, Asgardian Wars. 
Yeah, I, have, I got that little New Mutants minifig run. There's like the New York exclusive from Lego or whatever, you yeah. know? I got the little, so I was, I was like, very happy to have that. Which I was so excited when they announced that New Mutants movie. And I, now, I uh, can't wait for it. it well, wait. we might be waiting forever. Uh, yeah, it sounds <laughs> like it. Uh, they need to hurry up. Or and it will be direct to video it. on Hulu or something. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> now I'm kind of scared because of things I've heard. But no, she's literally my hands down favorite. Of uh, the few commissions I have, I have several of her. I have a Jaime Hernandez, Ileana. How the hell did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> because I interviewed him at a convention and we became tight and I got him to do it. And so he was I, like, I don't ordinarily see, do. We don't do podcasting because we like doing podcasting. We do it as a, uh, we, as a leg up to get ourselves <laughs> yeah, off. <laughs> I, one of my favorite is I do have a Chris Uminga um, Ileana as the Phoenix Five. Oh, that's awesome. So, that's cool. The new sword throws me. Down. I don't like I don't it. It's, like too the new sword. it's too long. It's too long. I want her soul sword where it's like part yes. of her body. It's more organic. Yes. Are I you talking about the one that's like the sword is in different pieces? No, the sword's like. Yeah. The scene, the it looks like a Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, sword. exactly. Okay. It looks yeah, like yeah. a fucking manga thing. Yeah. I hate it. I want it to be an organic part of her body and she can't control like a thing. You know? Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I would like her, and I would like, I would like. Uh, I could do a two-hour podcast on her alone. So. You are invited on my show, <laughs> and there's all we'll talk about Belasco. We'll talk about her reign as the queen of limbo. We'll talk about all that shit. We'll talk I, about how this isn't the real Eliana; it's an alternate version, and they should have brought back the real one. Can we talk about how her and Kitty Pride were supposed to be a couple, and they won't oh, fucking really? Kitty what? Pride was fucking her, fucking Rachel. Yep. What? Like, oh yeah, Kitty Pride is so by. Sexual queer, like you do not know this. I do not. I just yes. heard Colossus. You know no. Oh God, no. Yeah, no. Oh, tell me. She's and, always been a. And Claremont flat out says it. He's yeah. like, really? they would not let him make it overt at the time. Oh. But if you listen to him on other podcasts yeah. or interviews, he's like, no, it's well, it's well, not it's, subtext. It's text. Oh, Storm wow. is bisexual. Kitty Ileana has never had a relationship. Well, first of all, Ileana Kitty. was abducted from the age of yes. eight until yep. sixteen, so she did not have time to like go through puberty and have yeah. a normal thing, you know. So Ileana, she's had problems. It's you know that there. magic and that magic. That magic series was what got me into X Men as a little kid. Yes, because oh my gosh, I loved yes. it so much. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the booths that we. Saw. She squeed live on air. She, oh, she's getting all red in the face. It's really adorable. Um, so some of them, they had some very interesting booths. Let's <laughs> discuss at, this bizarre this phenomenon of live it's animals cool. in. <laughs> so guys, there is a booth at C two E two. That I shit you not is full of live snakes. I actually like snakes. I think it was like a snake rescue yeah. or something. It's, I it's, turned, it's, all it's, I know is I turned a corner and two feet away from me is a guy holding a snake wrapped around his arm. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is a really cool cosplay. <laughs> it's a reptile, like it's like a place to see reptile. It's like a zoo. Yeah, and so literally, I thought it was cosplay for a uh-huh. second. I'm like. No, that fucker's moving. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't have a problem with snakes. I actually like snakes. My husband won't let me have one, but I would totally have a pet snake. Um, but well, he, he got he, a snake on yeah, he Oh, well, let's, let, I'll let you ask him about that. Thank you for uh, saying that because I thought it but edited myself. But uh, no, he... It's, but there's like liking snakes and not being freaked out by them are one thing. Turning a corner and having a snake like look at you in the face is a yes. whole different ball game. That's some Nagini shit. Yes. Yeah, right. I'm just like, <laughs> what is happening? And literally, all I can think of is all these little kids running around, and you know there are people that are afraid of snakes. And they were not just in the little enclosures. They had them wrapped around themselves and were passing them around. Yeah, yeah. and they're walking out into various parts mm-hmm. of the floor with these snakes. Yeah, which I mean, I know at least one person who refused to come back to see the because of this. Oh yeah, I can yeah. just imagine. Um, so this was a booth that got me by surprise, the heavy metal booth. So I turn a corner and it's, it's kind of up in the front when you walk in. So I turn a corner and I just realized, I was like, oh, that person looks familiar sitting in the heavy metal booth. So this is Dave fucking Mustaine from <laughs> Megadeth. <laughs> So I turn around, I'm like, oh, fucking Dave Mustaine. <laughs> um, why are you at a, apparently he's doing something with heavy metal? Uh, uh, doing so, which is, makes perfect sense. It's, it's, it's perfect. So, for him. so how do you feel about Dave Mustaine in relation, in relation to Metallica? Do you think Metallica kind of like screwed him over? Or do you uh, feel like, uh, I, I think, he's I think kind of it's, jerk? well, it's one of those stories. I think that there's, each side has their own, each side has their own story and both of them have some truth to it and both of them have some bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, 
Dave Mustaine was using a lot of drugs, and that's part of what got him kicked out. I also think he was an asshole, yes. and that's what got him kicked out. I think both of those. I also think part of what got him kicked out is because he was asking for his like due cut and not for a lesser cut because he wasn't one of the original members. Um, Dave, well, Mus- I find some kind of monster. Like he comes off as so kind of sad in some kind of monster uh-huh. in a documentary. Craig, you know? Craig is. Craig from from our show is probably the better person to ask about that because Craig is so much more uh, knowledgeable about Metallica history and stuff like that than I am. Um, Dave Mustaine makes me happy because he's it's living proof that if you just keep working hard enough, your dreams can come true. Because <laughs> for years, all Dave Mustaine wanted was to be better than Metallica, and in 2019, he is. It just took him. Are so- you sure? <laughs> oh yeah, no, hands down, right. like. The stuff that Megadeth is putting out right now is leaps and bounds beyond what Metallica is I mean, doing right now. I mean, we all bought, you know, Peace Sells with Who's Fine. Right. Like, that was, I mean, that was the big out. I remember, like, a cover of Anarchy in the USA uh-huh. and, like, all this. I bought, like, the cassette single of that. And the no, so, I, like, I, I don't think you can compare them across time. Like, the stuff right. he's putting out now is not better than Ride the Lightning yeah. or Master of Puppets. But What is? Exactly. <laughs> but, like, if you look, like, so here's what Metallica is doing right now and here's what Dave Mustaine and Megadeth is doing right now. I think Megadeth's better. I think they're killing it. I and think I'm say Anthrax is probably better than all of them. Uh, Scott Ian's a god. He's Fuck a little, yeah, he he's is. a little tiny bearded god. He is. Um, I love metal. I, you know, I imagine Scott Ian must be like one of the coolest people to chill out with. I imagine him and Kirk Hammett. I imagine are like yeah. the chill geek dudes uh-huh. of these bands, and I imagine they're totally the people we want to hear. And with. those are both like I, I know those are both trauma dudes. So like both yeah. of them just adore trauma. And you and I both cited "I Am the Law" as like right. our favorite like comic related uh-huh. song. <laughs> Uh, so you had an interesting experience both, uh, and I don't know how much you can say about it cause I know it ties into your show. Um, but uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So I was, uh, invited to interview the, the ICP related rap group Twisted, uh-huh. who, uh, who have a comic out from what's the name of the I don't get me lying to you. I don't. You're know. the one that interviewed <laughs> <laughs> So I, I so they have this comic out, and it's kind of like this goofy sort of Scooby Doo thing, where like they're hunting ghosts, but they're not really ghost hunters, and they're having a wacky time, and they're they're very funny and making jokes about semen and dicks or whatever you need. <laughs> and so so I was, I was like I went to their booth and I interviewed them, and they're both in their full makeup. They wear like all this makeup, and they're like crazy contact lenses of these characters, you know. And so the one dude just like sweating and sweating all of all of his makeup, Mega. and like I and like we had like a uh, the hug at the end. I'm just like, oh, I feel this on me. I'm about to say, is there stains on your hoodie that I'm not seeing on the back? <laughs> so, but fun. they're very good at what they do. They're very good at, at being characters. Oh so yeah, I appreciate and, that. and fun fact: Sean is a huge Twisted fan. Oh, well, there so you Sean go. Sean loves ICP. Well, um, I would have rubbed myself on Sean so he. Could well, so you'll have that. to just 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 save that. Save like a little, like a little, just an essence of it, and you can you can gift it back to Sean. So, uh, so Caleb, I think I remember your favorite experience from the con when we were waiting to try to get into that panel we didn't get into, and we had to make a pit stop afterwards. Oh yeah, I got what panel was this? What panel was So this? we were going to go to the Marvel panel because we were going to find out what Hickman is going to be writing. Hickman Spoilers: is. It's X Men. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone so, knows this by the time that this comes out. Every, yeah, yeah, everyone knows that they announced. Like we are now post that panel, and it was in fact X Men. Um, Bleeding Cools already dropped an article. Yada yada yada. It was X Men. But we like we were up there, and once we realized, okay, there's no more room in this room. Like we're I'm not, we're not getting in. I was like, yeah, well, I could go pee. That'd be a cool thing to do. Which really the advantage of a panel is your feet hurt and you want to sit down for right. a while. Yes. <laughs> um, so we decided to go in there into the bathroom. I got to pee next to Jason Aaron. <laughs> That's that got me right. Oh fuck! Did, 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 <laughs> yeah, peak, did you peek? I didn't. I didn't. I was oh! I think there's certain things that you, you just don't do. You let me uh, down. He's let a really embarrassed guy, man. He, he is. Um, That's why I, I like him. I, I, there are certain truths about Jason Heron I don't want to know because it, they will they will either entice me or haunt me until I die. I just prefer to like I've got an image in my mind. I'm gonna let it live there because he's Jason fucking Aaron. Uh, but I can't wait to see what they're going to do with. It. So I'm not like I, I'm not buying all of the tie-ins because I don't have the millions of dollars. So many, right? And you but, know some of them aren't going to be good. No, they don't really tie in. But uh, the war, I'm excited to see what he does with War of the Worlds. War of uh, the Realms. War of the Realms. Sorry. War of the Worlds. Well, well, I did go to the War of the Realms panel. Did you before? Um, which was I'm not being blunt. It was more like a previous panel. <laughs> yeah. It was literally just the solicits. But he did indicate during that that. 
he's not leaving right after War of the Realms. He's got a little bit to wrap up, but he's already planning, trying to figure out what he wants to do next. Nice. So he's planning his exit on Thor. Nice. Um, First of all, I mean, he's had such a remarkable run oh on Thor. Yes. So, I mean, it's yes. time. I'm okay with that. He's been on, what, four years now? If not more, than five, that. five. But I mean, yeah. he said he's been doing this for seven years. Seven now. Yeah, right, because how long ago is Lady Thor? I feel like that had to be at least five years ago. Yeah. I feel like that. Well, Jane Foster, he had to run before that. Yeah. Right, of course, which is the, the god, yeah. the god, the god killer, Rome which was the best. The god butcher. I yeah. loved that so much. I love he's that. So, I'm not so kidding. Cool. The last couple issues with Jane Foster as Thor, I would cry yep. every issue. And I am not one to do that reading comic. Yeah. Well, and you are. You do not have a heart, and we do not understand you. You know, uh, <laughs> I can be a vicious bitch, but <laughs> See, I don't cry in real life. I cry when I read. Yeah, I'm watching a TV show, and I'm hoping my husband's not looking at me as I'm choking up. But other than that, I'm a heartless bitch. Right. <laughs> um, I am excited for War of the Realms. They let a couple of people come up and read the first issue. Nice. Was not one of them, but they. Um, one of the issues I'm. One of the tie-ins I'm actually excited for is the X-Men one, because they're going as Guardian Wars with mm-hmm. it. Like, they're talking, bringing, Dan- like, Danny Moonstar is the Moonstar. lead of that book. Well, you know, because most of the X-Men are gone in that unknown, unmentionable age that we're not going to talk about right now. But she is one of the ones that are here, and the whole preview was her magic, Wolf's Bang, Karma... Like, she's leading that whole storyline. So that's the only reason I want to read that. That'll be fun. Hell yes! That'll be fun. Yes. <laughs> That'll be a really fun. You remember when Wall Street was in love with that dude? Yes. Well, you remember they had a baby in Peter David's oh! x Factor run. <laughs> I think they just think. I think I'm witnessing two people fall in love with each other. We need other. to talk. It's later. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So other than that, did so I, I picked up a few comics. I've either I know you picked up some of the five dollar. Uh, yeah, the five dollar uh, uh, omnibuses, right? Yes. Which are, are well, I've got some of the Hulk ones. It's just they're they're insanely good. Where was that booth? Um, oh, it was somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> there, I will say, there was a booth that had like a crap ton of trades. Marked way mm-hmm. down there. Kind of right on the front row, right? Yes. Yeah. I actually saw, like, David and Vince from the EOC group yeah. there. Just, like, they had handfuls of stuff. Yeah. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, I found several things I was interested in. Um, but then I, you'd walk around and you'd see a booth that was charging full price. And I just literally want to laugh in their face. Right, like Graham Cracker. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, like, the <laughs> Graham Cracker, I turned around and walked out. I was like, I don't care what you got. <laughs> I get this cheaper on Amazon right yeah, now. That, that's the thing. Like, I don't understand. And I guess they're just hoping people who, at this point, who don't stupid. know. Yeah, they're, <laughs> I, they're hoping. I, it, it's really funny because cons now, they really do cater more toward what I consider. And I don't mean this derogatorily, but the casual people. Yep. Yeah. People who are coming there for. And this is something like the But movies, there's the people like going to the style and online booth and just being a try find a fucking t shirt. Right, pretty much. Yeah. Last yeah. Week, yeah. But it is funny how you can see them trying to, like, they're hoping that somebody who doesn't know any better will buy stuff. Well, and there was another booth that had a ton of trades. Like, that's all they had. Omnibuses, absolutes were in there, but they were all stuff I had. Um, if you bought 10, you were getting them 80% off. Yes, 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 yes. I was like, oh my God. And unfortunately, I buy too much crap that they didn't have 10 on one. <laughs> but I was like, damn, this is a missed opportunity for me. Did you, did you end up picking any up any of them, though? No, I was on the yeah. verge of getting the DC Tangent books, um, those fifth week events from way back, because I was thinking about having those bound. But they were they had all of them but one. Wow. And I thought about getting them all, but it wouldn't get, I had to get 10 to get that deep yeah. discount. So I was like, eh, I'm going to back off. I wish I had been walking around with you. I bet we could have just split we it. We could have, we could have piled up some, yeah. So the tomorrow is going to be my day where I really go look, look through like dollar bins and try to find those deals. Number one, because it's Sunday and it's the yeah. last day and a lot of people will, like, they don't want to take that stuff home, right? Yep. So they do it. But I have picked up a few, uh, so far and mostly out of like $5 bins and stuff like that. So, one of the one of the, issues, the runs that I'm trying to collect over time is the Tales to Astonish run, the original run. Uh, you get a lots of Namor and Hulk stories, and those are two of my favorite characters. Uh, so I grabbed uh, Tales to Astonish uh, number ninety one. It's a it's a great cover. Uh, it's got you know the Hulk's fighting abomination on it. 
Uh, it's it's one of my the, the colors are great. Uh, it's just it's stunning. And this is back when the Comics Code Authority was doing their thing. <laughs> the other one I grabbed is an issue I've been wanting for a long time, and it is the Avengers number one ninety five. And what this actually does, this book is actually the first, technically the first appearance of the Taskmaster. Uh, he's he's a cameo in this. The next issue, one ninety six, is the first, uh, like the first full appearance official, of it. Um, or is that the official? Or what? Well, I don't. It depends. Like I, I, me and Craig have this conversation all the time. Like what technically? What is a, in a first appearance? Like is a cameo? What count? defines a first? You know what? Uh, Apocalypse's first appearance is like the last yep. square of X Factor. I think eight or something. Mm-hmm. So. Well, Avengers 181 is the first appearance of the Hulk, but now technically, I mean, technically, if you want to go by cameo appearances, 180 is the first one. Uh, other than oh, that, I mean Wolverine. You're yeah, Wolverine, sorry. <laughs> I was like, the Hulk was... <laughs> Have I mentioned I'm drinking? Uh, <laughs> Have I mentioned I do Nikki the drinks? <laughs> uh, other than that, I picked up some more Hulk stuff just to kind of add to my add to my run. And tomorrow is really my deep, my deep dive uh, where I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up some more bumpers for the show. I really love doing that, getting artists and writers to introduce our show. So hopefully I'll get a handful of those. I can toss them around, maybe line up some interviews. I know Wendy, that's like you're working on lining up some more interviews. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, Brian, you have to split. Yeah. I got to be back at work on Monday and I've got a seven hour drive. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. You drove up here. You want to talk about that adventure? Oh my God. So yeah, on the drive up, I'm in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, driving up from Nashville. The road is a little rough. I'm behind somebody, and so I can't see that much in front of me. All of a sudden, my car sinks. I drive a Mini Cooper. (laughs) My car sinks into this, like, five-foot, I'm not exaggerating, pothole, and my front tire just immediately, the warnings go off of the tire pressure low. Yeah, no shit. My tire just exploded. Wow. I managed to pull off because um, the exit was right there, thank goodness. Get to a gas station, fill it up with air, and start immediately Googling for tire replacement places because I do have run flat. That'll get me a little bit. But, yeah, it sent me back two hours. Nobody had my tire of my size, so when I get home, I have to get a slightly smaller tire. And yeah. Like, this Your tire is so big. No, my tires are tiny. <laughs> no one can fulfill your tiny oh, needs no, ever. They can't. <laughs> well, what about you, Wendy? What are your, what's your tomorrow look like? Because we've got one I've more day of this work. big crazy I thing. I have to go back to work. Oh, you're not going to make it to the con tomorrow? No, oh, I have okay. to go teach world. drums all day. I have to go oh. teach uh, adults oh. and children how to play the drums all day. One thing we did not talk about yet, the cosplayers. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, we, we... First of all, okay, so what is... The deal, I have seen a bunch of men in, like, Hawaiian shirts with, like, a a, uh, a barbecue apron on that had some sort of, like, uh, a pun about meat or something carrying a gun. That's a I good... I don't know. So <laughs> so this is, it's weird. <laughs> Yesterday, Friday, I saw a ton of Game of Thrones people. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. A ton of Game like, of Thrones Like, I saw people. Khaleesi walking around mm-hmm. with a Varys, like... Tons of Khaleesi's. Every yeah. girl wants to be. Well, heck Daenerys. yeah, I want to be a Khaleesi. I did not see any Jon Snows. Damn it! We saw Jon Snow. Walk we did we see a few Jon Snow. Snows. Yeah, we so saw. All you gotta have is like the fucking curly hair and a big furry. Yeah, cane we saw some Jon Snow. Snow. I think my favorite one that I saw was actually earlier today, and it was a Swamp Thing. Yeah, uh, as we were you know, we were sitting in the Hyatt Bar, uh, we were actually getting ready to leave. And swamp like a huge, like eight foot tall Swamp Thing comes walking in. Yesterday, I saw a huge. Probably about seven foot tall, full Voltron guy. Ooh. Nice. Uh, and I could tell he was grumpy because he was grunting as uh-huh. he walked. Because, you know, the people that go all out, God love them, but you know that's got to suck. My favorite thing floor. ever, ever, and this is so mean, there was a guy who dressed as Godzilla and he was literally choking inside and he was having a hard time and he was like literally begging people to help him and people ever thought <laughs> oh he was God. joking. <laughs> On the way out. <laughs> I saw this girl that had to be Violet. I'm assuming she was Violet Beauregard from Willy Wonka. Mm. Well, she was just giant blue. Who knows? No, you, she was painted blue, but she was like in one of those, you know, those balls that you, they, people could do those bouncy things off yeah. of each other. She was in one of those painted blue. Wow. And I'm like, you are committed, but you're also an asshole because right. you're taking yes. up so much space. That's how I feel. That's how I feel a lot of times. So, and to me, also, it's the it's the difference of like people who come in like weird, just like Halloween costumes. Like I saw yeah. a dude just like dressed as like a shower. I, was, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what are you? Tra- Unless you have a woman who's Janet Lee with you, like I don't get what the fuck you're trying to do here. <laughs> 
<laughs> Today was a lot of anime and also yeah. a lot of Umbrella Academy. I saw a lot of that Lots too. But I saw a lot of poor Umbrella Academy where yeah. I was looking and I didn't know what they were doing. Well, it's like but they're walking around boa, with umbrellas. Yeah, if you have a feather bow and an umbrella, suddenly you're fucking Umbrella Academy. That was the only people, the only character people were cosplaying though was mm-hmm. the medium from the Umbrella Academy. Yeah. I saw a lot of... I text my husband and told him this. He's like, are you sure they just weren't flamboyant? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah like, but they were carrying an umbrella. At some point, you have to play the game gay or cosplay. Gay or cosplay. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, a lot of visible penis line of um, Spider-Man. Lots of... So a lot of VPL Spidey. In, in, in the history, there have been... like. The people seem to love people who I guess casual cosplay seem to love like the the one piece suits like yeah, the, well the because really you don't have to think it's yeah. just it's just you're putting on a bodysuit and that's it you don't have to think about it and those are no, the notorious like best ones to just see what you're working with because no one like Jerry from our show preaches this we're a fucking dance belt uh, like you Wait, should not what be, is a dance belt a dance belt is they, they it's what ballet dancers use as well in their tights and it it it. It contains? Yes, it oh. contains and constricts. Oh, well, and, of course. But so if I can tell what religion you are by your, uh, by, by your it's, cosplay. It's a dick bra is what you're telling so me. I don't, it's a dick bra. I don't I'm particularly, I don't particularly liked it. It was <laughs> <It's laughs> um, I was yeah. like, okay, hello, Spider-Man. <laughs> so I guess. But like, I'm just going to tell you, if you're going to make that decision, know that we're looking. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because we are. Yeah, of um, course we are. There, there were a ton of ton of more Spider Man, and yeah. so, so Spider Man's a character that's always popular. But I feel like there was a ton more Miles Morales Spider Man. Oh, definitely. Well, I mean, there think were. about like in the past year, we've had like five. So we had a new Spider Man movie. We had a Into the Spider Man. We had a Spider Man uh-huh. game that was huge. Mm-hmm. Like, like Spidey is like way more out there yeah. than ever. He's before. kind of back to being the flagship character. Maybe not yeah. in the comics, but in for yeah, Marvel. Yeah, because I mean, I saw Punk Rock. Which Spidey. is funny because they I don't know him for the movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> I saw like five, you know, so many different types of Spider-Man. Of course, you saw Old Man Peter Parker, a lot of Old Man Peter uh-huh. Parkers, a lot of, you know, the Yellow Jacket Spider-Man. Like, yeah, it was just so easy to be Spider-Man. Speaking of Old Man, did you all see Mr. Fantastic today? I did not. No. There was this older gentleman, and I did not see him and just happened to hear somebody go, hey, I'm Dr. Richards, and I looked around. Older gentleman, full Fantastic Four outfit with like 10 feet arms that he's oh. holding. And they don't look... they. They don't look cheap. I yeah. mean, he, he did go a little all out. And I was like, well, good on you. I saw a really good Ben Grimm today. So yeah, I saw, I saw there, there were some good ones. Uh, C2E2, the cosplayers, they, they went all out. And good on them. So I'm not into the cosplay. Jerry and Sean do the cosplay. I, I don't really care about it, and I never will. That's just something that's not for me. But, hey, good on those folks who do it. Um, I wish that C2E2 had have done what they did last year, and unfortunately it didn't. And they kind of roped off a section of the con last year. They called it Cosplay Corner. See, I feel uh, they did a lot of that. They, they do have down. that section. Oh, do yeah, they have Yeah, yeah it's just yeah. people that you could do. People weren't it's paying attention to well, photos. Yeah, there. exactly. Like, there was, like, if you went against that far, far yeah. wall, it was a ton of different photo yeah. ops to, and, and a lot of cosplayers with the photo ops. And also on the second floor, they had different lighting situations yeah. where mm. you could do so. So I do feel like they did that because they know, like, cosplayers are just there to get their photos taken. Well, <laughs> one thing about the con is it was, um, they had it kind of blocked off mm-hmm. in every region. Like, one square was all the comics, the actual comic dealers. Mm-hmm. Then you have Artist Alley behind that, so it bled into that. And then the, the celebrity photos were right behind that. Nice. And then as you moved over, you the back section was more anime, which led into the cosplay. And the video game section. The yeah. Video yeah. Game section the center, which also oh. led into the tabletop gaming. I was going to say, the tabletop gaming, I was yeah. actually impressed by yeah. that. So. I will say, I had my first ever celebrity photo op experience this year. Did you? Yes, I did. So I did I, as well. I, so, I mean, I do not believe in paying Debbie Picture Team with celebrity. I believe in hanging out at the bar enough to meet with them and have a drink with them. Because that's happened so many times. Like, at Wizard World, like, I remember Battlestar Galactica was I remember like having a drink with like Edward James Olmos or something because like, yeah. they would just show up because yeah. it was like where the hell else are you ever going to be and so it's like why would I pay hundred dollars to a picture take with you when I can just like wait at the bar long enough right. you know? but this year it was me and one of my buddies from my MMA class and we were like we want to take a picture with the Cobra Kai guys yep. to give to our <laughs> sensei Cobra Kai guys yes yeah 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 so we were like we're getting this particular, this particular picture taken specifically to hang in the dojo oh, and rad. give to our teacher so so we went to, and it was so funny so we both put on our geese we put on our fucking karate outfits we did the whole thing and we posed Ralph Macchio and William oh Sopka and William Gagasopka was like are those real? Are you guys real? I'm like, yeah. 
That's amazing. <laughs> so, but they, they shuffle you in so quickly. Well, I was going to say, yeah, for Brian, it's depressing. Brian and I, I, I don't know about Brian, but for me, this was my first con celebrity photo op. Mm-hmm. Our good friend, all of our good friends, Stephen Wooder, invited yes. us to take a picture with him. And once again, it's only good if it's because you're doing it as a friendship thing. Right, yeah. Like, I'm not doing this because me and Ralph Macchio are going to fucking fall madly in love. Right. I'm doing this because me and my buddy wanted to have a moment together. Yeah. So I think it's the same thing, the same thing with Stephen Wooder. It's like you want to do this because you're having this moment with your Well, friend. and I will admit, I have had a crush on the person that we got our photo with. Well, go ahead and tell us. late nights. We got one with Ant-Man himself, Paul Rudd. Uh-huh. Which is I've crazy. I've had a crush on him since the object of my affection when he <laughs> yes. had a gay man in the late 90s with Jennifer Aniston. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Just so attractive, and he has not aged a day in the twenty years. He, he was he incredibly is cool. Um, he is he is seriously Benjamin Buttoning. Like he is reverse age. Right? They schedule you for a group for when you're you're going to go in. So Stephen had the ticket, and mm-hmm. we all we line up. We're in line for an hour. Yeah, yeah. We get back there, and there's the four of us taking the picture because Roger joined us too. <laughs> and five seconds, and you're out. Yeah. I didn't even. Get to say hi or yeah, shake you know, a you, hand. You didn't say yeah. a word. I, I feel like the what Stephen was telling us about his experience with John Barrowman was a little bit more personal. Yeah, right. Because uh, I feel John Barrowman gives a shit. <laughs> well, he's a showman <laughs> and he likes to have fun. And this, right. and he makes a, he. This is his thing. He does right. this a lot. I couldn't. Right. I couldn't go do the John Barrowman thing because I would legitimately tell John Barrowman where my address and where I was staying. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, and he Stephen told us all what he came out and, <laughs> and told everybody beforehand. He's like, "Look, you know who I am. Tell me what you want for your." picture we'll do it basically if you want to grab my ass we'll do that if you've got kids maybe not but we're gonna say (laughs) i'm not gonna grab your kids ass but but he made a point of in the me too era everybody here is gonna hear what you say yeah (laughs) but i would have been like yeah we don't need a picture for this let's just go behind the curtain (laughs) <laughs> and he might have done it with John Barry. I'm so. just paying for an ass grabbing moment. We really don't need a photo. Of it's okay. <laughs> much. Weird segue, but I want to come back, like considering the subject matter. But when we were taking the picture with Paul Rudd, the people who were there right before us were a family, and they had this, their, their their kid, their little boy, and he was dressed up like Ant Man. Mm-hmm. They had taken half of a wasp doll. Yeah. And they had sewn it into his ha- Ant Man costume, so the wasp was sitting on his shoulder, and so he got to take that picture. That's just that's crazy. Like, precious. Yeah, that kid is a comics yes. fan for life. Now. Yeah, yeah. But once again, it's like we said, like that that moment wasn't yeah. about like worshiping Paul Rudd. That moment yeah. was about like a yeah. family moment. Yeah, well, and Paul and Paul Rudd was awesome. Like I was watching, he actually picked the kid up and like was holding the kid. Oh. So yeah, the, so for that, he did what he should have done. So hats off to him. Well, guys, we about ready to bring this thing home. All right, let's do it. So, I, again, C2E2 was a blast. I'm tired. You're tired. I've drank too much. I'm going to drink more. Uh, it's so much fun. Um, thank you to everyone in Chicago who helped put this on. Um, for those of us sitting at this table, at least, thank you for the EOC guys for being who they are mm-hmm. um, and connecting all of our uh, you know friends and building these friendships. Uh, Vince, David, Dap, or Jason. Uh, <laughs> we, we love all of you, and there's no way that we would be who we are without you. And so thanks for showing us a good time. Uh, you can find us here every Sunday, most Sundays, uh, at the SFG podcast. Uh, we're, we're dropping episodes. We've got a format. Unfortunately, I'm traveling uh, both this week and next week. So that's why things are a little bit different. Uh, doing a couple cons and I'll be in Portland next week. So you'll have something different. Um, after next week, we will get back to our normal scheduled podcast. Uh, you, you'll get more of the comics talk you love. You'll get more of the news, more of the listener questions because we absolutely love it. So I just, love your listener questions. You'll the, listen to ask some good things. They're so, they're so much fun. Um, and I can't wait to, to get back to that. Uh, but for at least this week and next week, I'm still traveling. So just kind of bear with us. And I hope you've enjoyed the conversation because I, I've, I've really loved having them. Uh, you know, Wendy, why, why don't you tell them where they can find all of your stuff at? You can find Double Page Spread on Twitter at Double PG Spread. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us, uh, uh, you know, on, on uh, iHeartRadio and many other places you'd find your favorite podcasts. I love your voice. <laughs> I love She's your doing radio voice. Double Page Spread brought to you by DCBS, a discount comic book service, as well as Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab presenting the latest drag queen scent for, for Skankerella. <laughs> that, that is a real thing. That is a real that thing. That is a real thing. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. yeah. So, guys, if you get a chance, I know we've said it before, go listen to Wendy's podcast. She puts on some of the best interviews in the comics industry. It's amazing. Uh, she's got one coming up with Twisted. So, if you're an all an ICP <laughs> fan, uh, if you if you at all like weird uh, gangster rap, or if you're just Sean. Uh, you can you should go check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and Brian, you're on our Facebook page, the SFG yep. page. You're on the EOC page. You're here, there, and everywhere. And you're just being awesome. And I thank you for coming and doing the show with us, man. Thank you for having me. It's been great. I, I really appreciate it. It was so much fun getting to know you. Like, well, I mean, getting to know you in, in person, person. Uh, in person. because we, we, we've known each other for a while now. Um, well, if nothing else, a, a reminder, you can, you can come hang out on our Facebook page with the Southern Fried Geekery podcast. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter. We're at SFG. SFG podcast on both of those. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, send them to Southern Fried Geekery at gmail.com. And if nothing else, go forth and love some comics. Woo!